assalamu alaikum uh, we had a great session uh, very uh, informative educative live cases um, we all want to like now settle down and uh, uh, get on with it uh, so uh, while we're still chatting and catching up with old friends uh, let me introduce the panelists and ask them to come up uh, we're going to have uh, mohanid agrid from uk and uh, javed ahmed from uk again and saving ra from korea uh, we're going to have ramesh dabbati uh, and uh, i'd like to have uh, professor shaolin to please take the chair uh, i'd like to ask uh, professor nadeem ayat malik to please take the chair and i'd like to ask uh, professor nadeem kamar i hope he's here uh, i saw him earlier uh, i'd like to ask uh, professor tahir zaghir to please come up professor tahir zaghir uh, professor tahir zaghir can i ask you to come up please and uh, professor tahir ali shah Uh, that's great and uh, uh mujibul haq please if you could take the chair and uh, professor tarik shafi he's already had a long, long session but i'm sure he'd like to join again and uh, mohammad nadir khan i saw him here and we're going to have uh, Uh, Dr. Bilal Murad here. I'd like to welcome him. Uh, Assalam, Assalam alaikum, and good morning to you, uh, Dr. Bilal. How are you? Can you hear us? It's great to have all these wonderful people. I can see uh, Mohanid Agrid there. It's, it's nice to see you, Mohanid. Good morning, nice to see you. And uh, for the first few session uh, lectures, I think Bilal would like to introduce them. Um, he'd like to introduce william lombardi and uh, so bilal uh, uh, without further ado um, let me just quieten some people back there uh, can we quieten down at the end please great uh, so bilal take it away from here and let's uh, get on with it thank you thank you very much everybody assalamu alaikum it is absolutely wonderful to be here uh, i'm sorry i'm not there in person inshallah next year I couldn't possibly be more delighted today and more excited than to introduce my wonderful friend and and uh, and my teacher, my mentor, Dr. William Lombardi. Uh, I think all of you know him. He doesn't really need any introduction, especially anybody in the CTO world. Uh, Dr. Lombardi is the professor of uh, international cardiology at the University of uh, Washington uh, in Seattle. He has, um, in the world of CTO PCI, uh, I don't think anybody has made more contributions along with him and his other colleagues. Uh, the techniques that he developed for CTO intervention and the development of the hybrid algorithm are essentially fundamental uh, to what we all do today. Um, and uh, you know, my, I have first had the opportunity of visiting him back in 2013 when I first gone to CTO PCI, and that I will say that that exposure truly changed my entire career direction. Uh, and just being in the lab with him and observing him uh, and working is just a whole different level of experience. So. Um, Bill, I can't be more grateful to you for being up at 11 o'clock in the night and talking to us in Pakistan. Hopefully, someday we can get you down there in person as well. So, um, please go ahead, and uh, the floor is yours. All right. Well, well, thank you all for having me. I really appreciate it. Sorry, I'm not dressed up, but I'm about to go to bed after I get done with this. Um, well, thank you for that very gracious introduction. And I think what I would like to do to open this session, and as you think about either in the previous case and where you're going to go in the meeting is basically trying to give you a frame set of how to improve. And I think it's, it's very easy to come to these courses and watch other people do things, but how does that transition to your actual clinical practice? How are you actually getting better? I can, people can watch what I do. Doesn't mean anything if you can't go home and do it because I can't be there. So this talk that I've hopefully can share here is a little bit about the mindset of learning. Um, I want to share my screen, but I got to get, I got to find my talk. 
that's not what I want to share. I want to share that. This Zoom is not working like my, oh, there we go. Cool. All right. No? Yeah. Well, we'll see if I can make this work. That's not what I want to share. Stop sharing. Gosh darn it. Apologize for the technical error. If I do that. Okay. Well, we may not get to... Let's see if I go to that. Can you see my screen? Do you see my slides just by chance? No, not yet. Uh, no. We can't see the okay. screen. No, I apologize. I, I don't know. I am not the best technical whiz here. Ah, here we go. That looks, no, that's the way the Zoom thing is set up. Have you opened your slide on the table? I have, but this is, it's got me in the meeting room A. Mm -hmm. It's not got, okay, it doesn't really matter. All right, I'm just going to wing it without slides. Okay, so I'm going to give you a new thought process. So I'm going to try to do this without slides. So what I want to talk about in the first slide of learning is for everybody in the room, I don't care if there's 50 or 1,000, there is an actual 20, top 25% of operators. There are people who are just better. And there are people who are not as good. And if I line that out, there's an actual skill set. And it's literally just a linear line, worst to best. But if you overlap that with people's uh, Dr. perceived Dr. Lombardi, ability, do you want our technical yeah. team to help you screen share? They can come and talk you through it. Okay. To help you screen share. Yeah. Can somebody please step up and help? I mean, I'm screen screen, share? The, the issue I have is when I hit screen share, it's not coming up with my. Hang on. There we go. Wait, wait. I may have it. There we go. Do you guys see that? Yes, we've got it. Yeah, great, 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 great. All right, All right. yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. See, I'm getting better. I have to learn more about Zoom. And part of that means making mistakes. Perfect. So this is what I was talking about. There's your actual ability and your perceived ability. Now, for everybody in the room, the biggest challenge is how do you know where your actual ability is? Because your perception is going to be wrong. And so who would you trust to tell you where your skill set really is? Would you believe them? And what would you be willing to do to change where you were on the actual score, not the perceived score? And this has actually been shown in medicine. If you look at people learning to do diagnostic tests, their perceived accuracy jumps far greater than their actual accuracy. And this is just a human nature thing. And what this really means is this isn't to say that you're bad or that you're not good. What it says is you need a lot of self-reflection and self-coaching if you want to improve. Unfortunately, that tends to hurt because you have to accept that you're not as good as you think you are and you're not as good as you would like to be. But that really is okay. That's how you get better. And so people will often look at what I do in the cath lab and just be like, well, he's got special hands or special skill sets or special this. And I would say, actually, the thing that makes me great isn't that I'm just technically unique. I'm a better student of what I do. And I put far more practice and failure and coaching. Uh, Dr. Labadi, would better. you want to go to uh, yes. the screen show, the, the slide Is show, it? so that uh, we can see the big screen? I am. A, well, it is on mine. Yeah, there it goes. Um, is that better? Yeah, it's going to show. Can you see that one? Soon. And if you go to slideshow and you go to this, uh, uh, I am in I am in slideshow. That's yeah, the problem. Takes a little while. I, no problem. It takes a little while. It'll happen. Do you see, do you see this slide? Yeah, we can see a slide. Yes, you this pressed the one that it. Says great show operators and can you be more successful? Uh, you know, this is the cartoon one that says how to acquire wisdom. Takes a little while. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the technical difficulties. All right. Okay, let's see. Can you see my lovely wife about to run the Boston Marathon? 
No, we see the no. That's I think we see the <laughs> slide just before that. God. Thank you. Okay. This is frustrating. I apologize. How about this slide? Do you see this? Oh, that came out terrible. Yes. All right. This is a horrible slide. So the first column is JCTO score zero. The last column on the far right would be JCTO score five. And what it's, what this shows is the big line here would be anti-grade wire escalation. And the little line here is anti-grade wire escalation. Now realize 85% of CTOs are JCTO two or greater. So if you really want to be able to do CTO PCI, anti-grade wire escalation has no ability and no skill set and is no better. But if you want to be better, you're going to have to learn how to do different forms of reentry, both retrograde and anti-grade. Let's move on. All right, so I'm going to show a, a couple of cases. So for everybody in the audience, if you had an 80-year-old with angina on two drugs of angina ischemia, would you suggest they get a cath? I would bet most people would say yes. In my situation, should they get revascularized? I would say absolutely. The next question is, well, should they get a cabbage or should they get a PCI? Now, everybody in the room is actually still begging, I need to see the angiogram. And you're gonna to need to see the angiogram because that will make you decide bypass surgery, PCI, or medical therapy. But it shouldn't be the angiogram, it should be why we did the cath. The angiogram is the technical piece how to fix it. And you could, in theory, if you're good enough, you never need to look at an angiogram because you should be able to do PCI on every anatomy. But that requires practice to get better. So I'm going to, hopefully these films will show. Can you see this angiogram? Do we see an angiogram? No, it's a, a slightest blank. Uh... That's great. I'm having a good time here. I apologize. Well, I was going to show three different LAD CTOs, but I'm not going to get to because we're having a rough day. If you click the, the play button on the video, it will play even I, if it's I, not in slideshow. I, I did pick the play button. The problem right now is when I go to... Okay, so do you see a slide of Aaron Grantham myself looking terrible with a big fish on it? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, and if I click the next slide, do you see a new slide or do you see the same thing? Same thing. This is my problem. We are having a technical issue with Zoom, and it's frustrating me. How about now? So we still see the fish. We don't see anything different. Still seeing the fish. Yep. Okay. I'm going to have there to do you, this. Well, now here it is. We are in the learning something new timeline. Okay. So what I want everybody to think about in learning is when you learn, the first thing you do is you make a mistake. The second thing is, you should probably think about that mistake. Then, then you can learn from that mistake and, and understand that maybe you don't know as much as you thought. Now, we as interventional cardiologists tend to not want to make mistakes because that means you might hurt somebody or you might fail or you might have to show your staff you don't look good. But if you want to get better, the only way to get better is to fail. And so this makes for a very difficult culture to try and improve. And so what you have to do is, how do I learn things in a safe fashion? How do I get coaching to get better? And how do I do that in a safe fashion? Now I'm gonna advance the slide and my guess is it didn't advance. Or do you see a new slide? Don't see a new slide. Okay, I'm having a great time. Here and then it it's back, here it is. Maybe I'll just leave it not in presentation mode. All right, so judging yourself or judging your work. So this is a difference between a fixed and a growth mindset. Many of us in a profession go, I can do that. I am a genius. I try it. It doesn't work out. And you get to the bottom, I should give up. I shouldn't do it. That's a bad technique. I used it this one time and I failed, so clearly it's terrible. Now think about anything in your life. If you did it once, are you good at it? If you did it 20 times, if you're good at it, if you went to play football 
and you're trying to learn how to do a corner kick and you do a thousand corner kicks, you'll get better. If you do a thousand corner kicks with David Beckham standing next to you, teaching you how to do a corner kick, you'll get even better. So what you want to look at is the other side, which is I'm trying to do a PCI. I'm pretty good at it. Oop, it didn't come out the way I wanted. This might be the worst thing ever. I need help because I can learn to do it. I just don't know how to learn to do it yet. And that's how we get better. And so this brings a topic called purposeful practice. And what purposeful practice is, how do I learn a new technique? So every interventional cardiologist should be able to do a PCI with less than five of contrast. Well, if you only try to do that in people with bad kidneys, you'll never learn it. So what you do is you take somebody with normal renal function. You can use all the contrast you want, but instead of doing it the way you've always done it, you're actually going to try and wire the whole vessel without taking a picture. And the first few times you do it, after you wire it and you think you're good, take a picture with contrast and prove you're okay and learn. Well, that one went into a side branch here. That one went right. So you can learn to mentally roadmap without contrast. And then the same thing. You put the IVUS in. You can landmark. You can check your stent. But over time, in these people with normal kidneys, you can practice to where you can get down and do the whole procedure with no contrast. Then when it's actually time to do it, you'll practice to be ready. The same thing with doing a bifurcation. The jailed balloon technique is simply a technique of people who are scared. They're scared because they don't know how to rewire the side branch and they're afraid of losing the side branch. So instead of using a technique that basically is about you being afraid, why don't we learn a technique to easily and always manage it so you don't have to be afraid of that and don't have to do extra steps or riskier steps simply because of a fear? Because fear comes from lack of experience and lack of knowledge. So let's learn it. And this is true of learning things like Stingray, <coughs> Star, Parallel Wire, or doing Retrograde. I had my fellow the other day. It was a functional occlusion. You clearly could have wired it anagrade. And I had him do a retrograde. There were great septals. So it's a great place to learn. We can do it safely and we can manage it. And that way they're learning the steps and gaining competence. So all of this is about, <coughs> excuse me, the purposeful practice. I could make a comment today. You know what? I have failed miserably in my audio video of Zoom and sharing my slide deck. So you know what? I have more practice to do, and I apologize for that, and I'll work on it. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It doesn't mean I've done anything wrong. I just have something that I need to do purposeful practice on. I'm going to skip the videos because it's not working super well. And I'm really just going to go down to these last two slides to conclude and let you guys get back to your learning and your education. What I would tell you is the object of live cases and the object in theory of the panel is to share experience so that we don't repeat each other's mistakes. Now, the issue in that is if everybody in the panel is making the same mistakes, then they all may need to sit back and say, where should we go to learn differently and get better? The same thing I would tell you is improve yourself every year. Your job is not to become the next Bill Lombardi. Your job is to be a better version of yourself next year than you are now. So develop a plan that leads to improvement, say, the next six months, I'm going to work on zero contrast PCI. The next six months after that, I'm going to work on bifurcation. The next six months after that, I'm going to work on retrograde. And in each of those situations, be vulnerable, get coaching, talk to somebody trusted who knows what they're doing and can explain why and how to do it and give you constructive teaching and algorithms to solve problems to help you get better. And I'm going to do this. Hopefully this will get you to the last slide. And so the, the goal in this is don't aim for perfection. Perfection is a false. When everybody at the podium is standing saying, well, this is the right way to do it, and five people give you five different ways to do the right thing, there is no right thing. And it, it's okay to have a difference of opinion. 
but talk to people and have them explain why their way is right and decide whether you think that makes sense or they do it just because that's the way they do it. And the idea in that is you will get better. It's not about best. It's not about standard of care. It's not about perfection. It's about better. Every year, I pick something either in my professional or my personal life that I work on to try and get better. Now, I may not get better, but I'm at least going to keep trying. So always be in that very self-reflective state to try and develop structured practice and do purposeful practice to get better. The other, you know, I had to get some stuff on, on my personal life, so I had to get a counselor. I had to get a coach because I didn't know how to manage some of the anxiety and struggles I was having. So I needed to get someone who knew more and could give me good insight in how to do it. And I would say that brings it back to something that's very difficult for all interventional cardiologists, which is we hate to be vulnerable. People who are famous, people in this profession have been trained that they're supposed to be the best and that they can do everything and that they're perfect. And I hate to tell you this, but none of us are. As much as everybody sits there and espouses, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm great, you're not, none of that's true. We're all just trying to be a better version of ourselves. We all have huge insecurities, and we all need to get better. So with all of that in mind, I would offer up, if you want to learn more about complication management, we run a two-day course in Seattle through CRF. It's July 14th and 15th this year. It's a Friday, Saturday. It's about a third the mental aspects of dealing with complications, and the rest is all about very technical and basically, I try to come up with every potential complication that can have in a cath lab, and we go through algorithms and management together to try and help us all get better when it does come. Uh, maybe a last few comments, Dr. Lombardi, because we have to be the live case at uh, 11.45. Oh, I, uh, so I'm sorry. I apologize. No problem. All done. Oh, really wonderful. So, uh, Thank you, Bill. Uh, if you're all good, uh, uh, I think we'll save the questions till the end because we've got some lectures to go through. Um, so the next uh, lecture would, uh, would be Dr. Bilal or Dr. Kadria, who is ready, we can have it, but we must be, you know, uh, for the live case by 11.45. Um,